May Jesus Christ be praised, and let's keep walking with Maria. Here I am again, dear friends. I would like to start this video with a Hail Mary with you together. Let's pray to the Blessed Virgin. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Here we are again, dear friends, after nine months of obedient silence, just like an entire nine-month mother gestation, despite the imposing mud machine that without measure has tried to put me on my knees and to make me collapse until almost my physical suppression. The hyenas of various savannas with their shameful incursions, the more shameful, the more welcome they were, as it seems, in allegiance to some occult forces that sent them not only downstairs from where I live, but right behind my home's back door during those nine months of silence, have failed in demotivating and defeating this poor priest with the crown in his hand, despite all their maneuvers. On the contrary, a simple priest without any means and without the mundane power is human. I neither have any allegiances that protect me, nor any occult strong powers how many there are nowadays, to keep me safe. I, weak and unarmed, proceed with only the strength of the faith and in full hope in the hearts of Jesus and Mary. Sometimes I myself wonder how this very well-organized apparatus that persecutes me can be afraid of a small priest like me. Then the words of Montfort in regards to those who are consecrated to Mary come to mind, and that's when I understand, and tonight I confirm to all of you that my strength, my support, my refuge is Mary. She holds me like a mother hen holds her chicks, under her motherly wings. She whom Montfort defines as the philosopher's stone, with whom her discoverer falls in love and from whom he obtains all graces. Truly, when one discovers in his own life, especially priestly life, this deep relationship with Our Lady, with Mary, everything changes, everything changes. Since when on last June 26, 2017, my Bishop Corrado Lorifice removed me from my role of parish priest with immediate execution, I didn't even have the chance to say goodbye to my parishioners and substantially was suspended ad divinis even though they continue to say this is not a suspension, this is not a suspension, when in fact it substantially is. Since when last March I was obliged to remain silent on all social networks, since last March I have not spoken, since when for having spoken the truth on the false church. I have known moral persecution and have been practically reduced to being in exile, but I had predicted all of this, if you remember, because I knew I was speaking the truth. If I was that poor crazy person that some television broadcast tried to portray me as, they even called me the showman of the sacred, a definition that even many churchmen have welcomed, they would have left me in peace after all. 
Instead, they run after me, they run after me, but they don't know that in my eyes, on my lips and in my heart, I have nothing but Mary. It is her who whispers to me to go ahead. She grabs me and tells me, go on, go on. And, and she now tells me in my heart to raise my voice in defense of the healthy Catholic faith, which today is being jeopardized like never before. The Virgin Mary has been, and still is, my strength. And it is thanks to her, if you really want to know, if I have been able to stand for all these months. And now I am even more motivated to continue to move forward. Therefore I tell myself that these strange hierarchs of the so-called Church of Mercy, which hits those who do not conform to these criteria, the Church of Mercy which runs to all the Italian ports to welcome the poor immigrants, but then brings to the guillotine those who don't adhere to its single line of thought of dictatorial nature. These people are not afraid of me, who can easily be eliminated. I have no bodyguards and no defense, but they are afraid of her. They fail to predict a reaction. Since Holy Mother Church has been occupied, because we are speaking of a true invasion, for the plot of the destruction of the Catholic spirit of old, the plan has been carefully studied in all its details. The plan has been carefully studied in all its details, dear friends. Unfortunately for them, who consider her to be the Mary of the Gospels of a few spoken words, they did not deal with her for their blame, with her, with Our Lady. They have not understood that the Blessed Virgin will save the Church. She will save the Catholic Church, which does not belong to this person or that person, but which is the sole property of Jesus Christ. No ideology can stand up against the exclusive ownership of this bride that belongs to Jesus Christ, and our Mother will save the Church. She will save the Church with the methods given through the Magnificat. He hath put down the mighty from their seats. This is the true answer I give this evening, and it is the ev evangelical answer. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and the meek. May the Blessed Virgin save the Church from this heretical deception, from this blind extravagance that reevaluates Martin Luther to the point of considering him a holy reformer. Dear friends, there are those who, like Bishop Galantino, state that the Lutheran Reformation was an action of the Holy Spirit, and we still remain silent. There are those who, revisiting the Holy Mass in preparation to an ever-increasing liturgical ecumenism, there are those who shake hands with the world and persecute the prophets, those who speak of mercy and kill whoever does not share their way of thinking, and then a continuous waltz of doctrinal and pastoral extravagances. And in front of the solemn oath of the Blessed Virgin of Fatima, at the end my Immaculate Heart will triumph, how many of us have remained, despite everything, Roman Apostolic Catholics. Let us all stand up now, because Our Lady is coming to review her troops. Resistance, dear, dearest friends, this is the decisive key word. Resistance until the end and in front of a deceit that because of its well-camouflaged clothes of a false mercy carries an apocalyptic taste. This is not the battle between the progressives who are in the government and the ones who are suspended and or excommunicated because they are faithful to the magisterium of always. No, this is the battle between the woman dressed in the sun and the infernal dragon that has launched its most subtle attack on the Church. Truly, the Blessed Virgin, as we can read in the Treaty of the True Devotion to Mary, loves, sustains, guides, and protects those who are consecrated to her. After all, whoever consecrates him or herself to our Mother shall never fall in the traps of Satan and of heresy, as Montfort said. Tonight, I, who for the first time am, talk am talking again, and you'll understand why, feel the need to tell you all that I feel the very strong, motherly, and loving presence of Our Lady, and I repeat with the great St. John Paul II, totus tus. Furthermore, since an enamored person is always in need to personalize love, here I am, calling on you, Mother, my sweet Mother and Queen, 
Mary most holy, I am here to give you my life and to give you and to give your immaculate heart my unexplainably hurt and unjustly scorned priesthood. Famulus tus sum Maria, Mater mea, Famulus tus sum Maria, Regina mea, Famulus tus sum Maria, Domini mea. I, I declare myself to be your servant, Mary, mother of mine, Mary my queen, Mary my queen, the demons tremble and the heresies run away in front of your motherly empire. With you, my mother, let us now free the church from her hidden enemies, and let us give her back to her Lord in all her beauty and glory. This is not a utopia, because she, the, the church, was paid for by the precious suffering of my marginalization, by the ruining of my own reputation, and by my total derision. At your sign, O Supreme Lady, we will be ready. Through the weapon of the rosary, let us free the Holy Church from this poisonous situation and this devious heresy. This is not an attack on Don Munutella, my dearest friends. This is an attack on the entire Church. With that said, today, on the eve of St. Leo the Great, the first pontifex who took the name of Leo, Lion, and who truly roared against the heresies, I must bring this to your attention, enemies of the Church. Following the recourse I presented to the Congregation for the Clergy in the Vatican, after having sent a letter to my bishop on September 21st, in which I professed again every single truth of the Catholic faith, including the reverence of the intellect and of the will to the Roman Pontiff, the Prefect of given congregation has notified me that the recourse was going to be suspended until December 8th. In the meantime, I would have had to make a public commendation of fidelity to Pope Francis on public networks. I asked myself the reason why for such uncustomary request. In any case, having expressed my reverence of the intellect and of the will to the Roman Pontiff in the previous letter, I did not follow the request, which was expressed as a suggestion. This is also because Cardinal Stella is prefect, but not my spiritual father. Where does such unusual request come from, I asked myself, a request never seen before. A person is ready to obey except those things that go against the soul. No one is above the gospel. In any case, today, November 9th, I've been convened called in person in the Curia by my bishop, who after long months of obliterating me while I was being devoured from the hyena's TV program and publicly humiliated, without having received not even one phone call from any among the exponents of the Church of Mercy, finally my bishop has reached out. He summoned me and he read a letter in which it is written that if I fail to do an act of public fidelity to Pope Francis, I will be excommunicated with two solemn excommunications. What? What did I say? Yes, you heard that, dear friends. I will be excommunicated with two excommunications. Away from the fact that when I heard this, I almost smiled as I thought that in the meantime, this church is lifting the excommunication from Luther, therefore I can be hopeful. Furthermore, I had to remind my bishop that in the letter I had sent to him, to the congregation, I had reiterated my respect towards the Roman pontiff. At this point, I would like to understand if I send a letter to my bishop and I declare to the Archbishop of Palermo without making any names, the bishop calls to tell me this letter is not valid. Why isn't it valid? I asked. It's not valid because you have to specify the name of Corrado Lorefici. Why do I have to specify Corrado Lorefici? I wondered. Because if you do not specify his name, I excommunicate you. Do you understand, dear friends? This is either schizophrenia or a true blackmail. Nothing less than a blackmail, dear friend. I would like to say that there has been a unilateral persistence on having me make a public act on all social networks in which I would have had to declare my fidelity to Pope Francis. 
Here I ask myself again, and I ask to all of you, isn't the Roman pontiff who Pope Francis is, or is the Roman pontiff nominally a different role from the one of Pope Francis? I ask this because if these two were the same person, then how can there be two excommunications? This means that behind such issues, something else is going on. But these people must be very careful because what is at stake is the good of the church. If the distinction between Pope Francis and the Roman pontiff is only nominal, then I reconfirm I have made my declaration in writing. I even have inserted a longer version of it within my letter. Therefore, they did not want to listen to me. There are those who wish to add fuel to its fire. What happens then to my nine months of obedience? Therefore, I want to tell those of you who are listening, as well as to all those who are waiting for my answer, that I refuse to make such hypocritical public act, which would not be of obedience, but rather of supine subjugation, supine subordination, which, as St. Thomas Aquinas teaches, since the virtue of obedience is subjected to the regime of the virtue of justice, if justice is missing as a cardinal virtue, that re regulates the virtue of obedience. It is no longer a virtue, but a vice, as well as a pure subjugation. As a priest and as a baptized person, deeply in love with Christ and of his church, which is currently going through Calvary, I declare the following. It is now I who humbly ask that the Roman pontiff may clarify what he truly thinks in regards to the communion, to the divorced and re remarried, because he's creating a climate of confusion of which he is the primary responsible, especially in regards to the salvation of souls. What is at stake here is the salvation of souls. Therefore, this is the time in which the true Catholics, who do not want to camouflage themselves behind this or that smokescreen, must come out. Now is the time, as predicted in the third secret of Fatima. I must remind with strength to the eminent cardinals, to their excellencies, and to all the brother priests who are well aware that we are going through a time of confusion, of loss, and of test inside the church. If we remain silent, we will take an immense number of souls into hell, and even for us there will be eternal damnation. We must ask for clarity, for the good of the souls, for the good of the sheep given unto us. If these new openings were to be really God's will, then at least may there be respect towards the many within the church who walk at a slower pace because of a need for more clarity. If we then look not at the acts of oppression, I have remained silent for months, and from tomorrow I will be excommunicated twice, which I still fail to understand. Maybe it means that even if I am born once again, there is no hope for me. Now I will say two final things. First, that we must obey God rather than men. And this is the word of God. We must first obey God before we obey men. The condemnations made towards me have no validity. They are instead badges of honor, as I have already said other times. This false church at this time, with all her unpredicted insolence, is governing with such overpowering acts in order to instill fear in others, and has made me out to be an example, so that before there are some good priests who want to come out and speak, they may think twice, given how they reduced Don Munitella. The Apocalypse tells us to come out, come out of Babylon, that they may decide for themselves. We follow the healthy magisterium of the Church, badge of honor. Just like Saint Athanasius, I am not afraid of these condemnations. The Lord reveals to me in my heart that these are unfounded condemnations. Do you realize? Because of the fact that I did not do an act of public fidelity to Pope Francis on social networks, when such was just a request, which I am absolutely free not to obey, I received two excommunications. This has never happened in the entire history of the Church. This smells like a regime, and not like the Catholic Church. And if I speak in this way, it is right, because I do love the Church. I am sorry for all those who, inside the Church, know what's going on and yet are still using an excessively diplomatic language, 
which in a way is probably further damaging, since those on the other side have no problem being extremely clear. I beg that the part of the church that screams for its discomfort will be cared for. I say this to the Roman pontiff, as well as to myself, the very last among the parish priests. If we don't listen, God will intervene in ways we cannot even fathom. In conclusion, may the Blessed Virgin impede this double excommunication in the face of something that is unbelievable, to say the very least. As I said, I pronounced myself on my reverence of the intellect and of the will to the Roman Pontiff. I need to underline that such action will provoke an injustice that's not only unproportionate but also formally unfair. In the letter of September 21st sent to the bishop and to the congregation of the clergy, I re-expressed full consent of the Roman Pontiff's intellect and on the will. I think I have clarified all things, and in this very moment I think of my family members, who know very well, especially my parents, how I would celebrate the Mass by the age of two, while my twin brother would be the altar boy. In front of this dramatic time for the entire church, in which a poor servant who refuses to passively watch the church being transformed into something of the world, I appeal to the hearts, I appeal to the consciences, as St. Augustine would say, Ecclesia Virgo Virgo in Fide, Meretrix in Eresia. This is a dramatic time for the entire church. Maybe what is being perceived is that this side of it, me, suffers more. No, that is not true. Even on the other side of the Tiber and all the way inside the Vatican rooms, an atmosphere of fear, of terror, of anguish and of intimidation governs the hearts and minds of priests. Why? Why have we arrived to this point? Until when, O oh Lord, your vineyard goes to ruins as the boar of the woods destroys it and feeds off of it. Come, O oh Lord, come to save your church. I believe I clarified every point, and as I can see, there will be the unavoidable double excommunication. But the heavens will intervene in the way God sees fit, because the devil makes the pots, but not the lids. And because what can be considered a condemnation could, unfortunately for them, sound like a badge of honor. Let's keep walking with Mary.